The first thing that you notice about me is that I'm female. Around the same time, you notice that I'm white. And then you make a mental note that I'm very, very short. <laughs> but then I open my mouth. You heard my voice, and your opinion of me became much more concrete. Voice impacts so much of how we view people. We know that from phone conversations to job interviews, it's one of the most important parts of first impressions. We also know that how we sound carries more weight if we're female than if we're male. Women have always struggled because of the pitch of their voice. Many studies have shown that deeper voices are considered more authoritative in women, while higher pitched voices are considered more attractive. This is a catch-22 if you're a woman running for elected office, where it helps to be both authoritative and attractive. But what I want to talk about today is how North American dialect is changing. And now this change, it's hurting young women. If I asked any one of you to do an impression of the Kardashians, you would drop into the lowest register of your voice. You would talk down here. And you would inflect at the end of your phrases. <laughs> when we drop below our natural register, we fall into something that's called vocal fry or vocal creaking. It's created by the slackening of the vocal cords and letting air out irregularly. Think about how you sound when you first wake up in the morning. One explanation for why this may be happening is that women could be lowering their voices intentionally. Over the years, we've seen that women's voices have changed, from being on average about one octave above a man's to only about two-thirds of an octave. But women could be trying to speak lower to sound stronger and more assertive. Unfortunately, it doesn't read that way. People equate vocal fry to sounding tired, sounding disinterested, or just sounding bored. One study showed that employers are 86% more likely to prefer a job applicant that uses normal voice. For instance, thank you for considering me for this opportunity, than a candidate that uses vocal fry. Thank you for considering me for this opportunity. The interesting thing is that we know vocal fry affects both genders, that men use vocal fry just as often as women, but because we expect women to have high-pitched voices, when they drop low, people notice. So we're stuck. Between having a voice that's too high, where we're criticized for sounding shrill, and a voice that's too low, where we're criticized for sounding bored. So what do we do? Well, we know that dropping our voices off is an issue, it turns out that the opposite is just as much of a problem. It's called upspeak. It's when you inflect at the end of your phrases. <laughs> it's used by women twice as often as men, and it makes women sound like they're unsure of what they're saying. Imagine asking someone what time it is. It's 2 o'clock. But if I tell you it's 2 o'clock, well, now I've put the responsibility on you to reassure me that I'm right, or at least that's what it sounds like, so why is this happening? One recent study showed that women may be using upspeak as sort of a vocal indicator to show that they have more to say. It's like adding, you know, at the end of a sentence to say that I'm not done talking, so don't interrupt me. One study done by George Washington University showed that men are 33% more likely to interrupt when they're speaking with a woman than when they're speaking with another man and that on average, in a three-minute conversation, men interrupt women 2.1 times. This constant assault of women's speech has led us to develop a vocal pattern just so we're able to finish our thoughts. One other explanation for why women may be using upspeak is the scenario you imagine when you think about the word bossy. Women have been targeted for speaking with conviction, so upspeak that's a way to avoid that. When I tell you it's 2 o'clock, what I'm really saying is that I know it's 2 o'clock. In fact, I'm quite certain. But I'm going to tell you this simple fact while trying not to sound bossy. Now, I want to take a moment to clarify that it is not my intention to call out women. I am not trying to police women's voices. What I want to do is draw attention to the fact that we're ingraining this sexism so deeply that women need to change the way that they speak to compensate. 
that no one is noticing, but that this change is deepening the effects of sexism and making women sound unreliable, uncertain, and incapable. Out of the 500 CEOs of America's top companies, only 25 of them are women. For a woman to attain a high-powered job, it's not enough to be well-qualified. It's not enough to do all the right things. Presence matters. But we've taught women that assertiveness is not attractiveness, and that strong isn't sexy. Now, it's time to teach women to stop apologizing, to stop apologizing for knowing what they're talking about. This doesn't mean that we have to be more aggressive. This doesn't mean that we have to be more masculine. It means that we have to try and be authentic in the ways that we present ourselves and our ideas. It means not falling victim to vocal patterns designed to undermine our power of speech. Thank you.